All right, good evening, everyone. It is uh, Wednesday, November 13th, 7.30 p.m., and I will call to order our uh, planning board meeting for this evening. Um, our chair is uh, just finishing up some paperwork, um, but um, we can probably get going. Um, the first agenda item is discussion about planning board meeting, which is currently scheduled for December 9th. Um, and of course, there is now a special town meeting on December 9th. Um, John, I believe we already have a hearing scheduled for December 9th. We do. So can you just walk us through from a process perspective um, how we address that? So there's um, really two options that I, uh, I see in this. So we could ask, so it's Massmanock Woods is what's on the hearing or on the agenda. So we could ask Massmanock Woods to request a continuation and then it can be continued at we hold the talent we hold the planning board meeting at the town meeting we have a quorum the board just votes to open continue it and then close and that's it um the other option is we advertise the planning board meeting for town hall it happens that no planning board members show up and there's not a quorum and everything gets continued anyway so you said in your memo to november 25th that would be wrong right oh. from december oh 9th. yes you are right Yes, you're okay. right. It would be December 23rd. Do you have a recommendation of which of those? I think it's cleaner to continue it. Yeah. I would I would hold a meeting at town meeting and just okay. continue it. We've done that before, right? We just went to one of the school rooms before we've had a right. quick meeting. Yeah, we typically but schedule But is the location already posted? Or is it, even though we were posted, it would be here? Or we didn't? We haven't posted the agenda yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and the reason we can't continue it now is because we haven't posted the agenda yet and, and they're not here. Uh, so we haven't posted the agenda, and at the last meeting that it was on the agenda, we continued it to December 9th. So anyone who's reading the minutes or was at that meeting and didn't necessarily look at the agenda for this meeting or for the next meeting, they would still think it's on December 9th. And there's no additional oh, communication to them that would indicate a, a change. Okay. Yeah. But we can't so, do that now. Right. Correct. Um, procedurally, at, town, at special town meeting, at 730 because that's when it's posted we have to take this vote no no you could hold it we haven't set the agenda for the ninth so we could start at six o'clock six thirty seven o'clock and just we like didn't we set did, the time okay we didn't set the time right. we didn't Perfect. set the agenda nothing so okay. no location kind of no open time. To what we can do yeah through the chair yeah. do we know actually the location and the time for the special is the special town meeting at uh, the middle school? It, it is. They had to change. Did they decide that definitely? Because yes. there was a conversation going around. The, the, there was that a concert was that night. What? Okay. Oh. Well, the Do you know, John? I don't. I, um, I heard they may look at the high school, but I, I haven't heard anything else. No, the, um, well, yeah, the, there was a lot of Okay, actually, hold on. I'm hearing from four people. The <laughs> concert was moved, Michael. We got confirmation from the department head that Yes. To where? To a different to a different night. To a different night. So you know, this is our H cam person. Um, that special town meeting is at the middle school at seven o'clock on December 9th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I didn't know about the conflict. Okay. So should I make a motion to move our meeting to 6:30? So you would just post it for like 6:45. Yeah. I don't think there's a vote needed. It could just be. So the, we, and start. we just need to you just send a reminder to us to arrive by 6:45. Have a meeting room for us. You'll yep. post that in the in the posting, and uh, and we'll meet and we'll <clears throat> make the vote. Yep. And I presume, obviously, that you will contact the applicant and let them know. I will ask him if he plans on continuing, and give him background as to what what's going on. Okay. I assume he would. Okay. Oh. Should we do that at the end of the meeting when we just, or does it matter when we do it? Do what? Do Today? So do you want to make that movement? No. Uh, uh, is the timing right? Because don't we normally, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, we don't, the meeting has not placed and okay. time has not been set. So no, that's but when in this meeting posted. do we do it? We can do it right now in this meeting? The John motion? just does it. Okay. Yeah. You don't need anything from us? <laughs> you don't need anything from us? No. Right. Okay. okay. Yes, we've got to make sure, check, and see when, how, how, how the continuation was worded for Mass for McWoods, as far as the time is concerned. Because meetings, you know, typically start at 7, 7.30. Mm. 
Right. So, so I guess be, uh, if, it, if it was said, if we can check the minutes, if it was said yeah. that to the meeting on December 9th at 730, yeah. I don't think it was because I think right. we've gone away style. from well, that. We can check but the minutes. Check. And then <coughs> if that's the case, we have to take a, f we should sit together at town <laughs> meeting. We have to take a few minutes at town meeting and have a little powwow. Question. Maspinock Wood, would they have to be able to be in attendance? Because if they don't live in Hopkinton, I, I saw Mr. Perkins, is it? I don't think they'd have to be in attendance. No, they're going to know we, can, we don't have the availability to discuss it that night. We're going to have to work it out. And then and secondly, for clarification, if some of us are stuck in traffic and aren't there and there's no quorum, it's the same thing as if we were there and just... There's no difference. This, we all plan ahead and do our level best to get to town meeting at 6:45, no later. That would be I mean, great. If, yeah, it would be if no one could be there and there's no quorum, then there's no yeah. quorum and everything gets continued anyway. But yeah, let's hope that doesn't happen. Right, right. But, yeah. but the same result either way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, like most posted meetings before town meetings, they are not televised. They just been in a classroom. Or a right. That's session. correct. Right. Those that meeting would not be televised at a uh, special town meeting. I appreciate that, Mike. Um, but there would be uh, minutes to document the action taken. Yep. And then while we're on the topic, yes. just to put some uh, thought in everybody's brain, then the meeting after that is December 23rd. Nice. So if there's any uh, last minute shopping <laughs> thoughts to change it to earlier, so um, we can do that at the November 25th meeting. I think I emailed John and Muriel, but I cannot make the 23rd, but we're going to go out of town. Leaving, we'll be leaving Sunday. Maybe, maybe everybody could check their calendar. We don't have anything posted for the 23rd we yet. Don't, no. All right. And I don't think everybody there's any take the action that. to yeah. check their calendar um, and let John know what their availability is on the 16th. Does that make sense? There's no Zach meeting. Yep. I can tell you that. Only. There is a growth meeting, but we could probably reschedule that. Yeah. So would we have one on the 9th and the 16th? The ninth is special town meeting. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just great. Thanks. No, it's a little special town meeting. Our then our is meeting. Is it possible that we can make that Christmas. decision tonight? Is everybody? So we skip the 23rd. I'm we'll just doing the 16th. Yeah. I'm fine right. with doing the 16th. Yeah. I'm fine and with Christmas, doing the 16th. Yeah. Frank, are you able to check your schedule? I'm checking. <coughs> I have it. Uh, should be fine. Okay. Should be. So we should have a quorum no matter what on the 16th, so that's helpful. So that's moved up. Okay. So Perfect. Good. Okay. Um, all right, so the next order of business um, is the no. request of the Growth Study Committee for some nominal funding for data work um, that the school was doing. Some of the data that we were hoping, um, the Growth Study Committee was hoping could be done. Um, matches resales of homes with actual students and that's not publicly available information um, so the school was um, handling that work and they are doing it for 2016 17 and 18 I spoke to um, the town manager and the assistant town manager yesterday evening that funding has been uh, accommodated so we appreciate that and we um, we uh, have an understanding of a a process going forward should we need um, nominal funding between now and town, town meeting so that works so madam chair uh, yeah I, I know we have an agenda I, I want to quickly mention though um, two two things today that are important to our, our town one is the passing of um, Kathy McLeod our former uh, su school superintendent um, it's in hop news and, and age cam um, and I, I she's did a lot of good for our town. I just wanted to maybe take a moment of silence, if, if that's. I'm entirely in favor of that. Oh. I will tell you that um, I met Dr. McLeod when she was interviewing for the, um, the position for superintendent. Um, she was impressive then, and she took over at a very difficult, tumultuous time. Mm -hmm. and she did uh, an impeccable job and was amazingly professional and brought the school district forward. Um, in her short time with us, so um, well I said. support that. So take a minute. Okay, thanks. Anybody Thank you. Else? Did you have something else? The other thing was um, <coughs> the city of Worcester lost a firefighter this morning, and I just wanted to take a mention that that 
we're all volunteers, but our professionals do a lot for us. Um, and I see our chief slamming here tonight. Uh, he's here all our meetings and does so much for our town. I just want to thank him for doing the good work that he does and express my condolences for the loss of your firefighting brother. I think I mentioned on my way in that uh, he got extra points, but then I see a lot of people came, but you get extra points for being here tonight. And uh, we certainly do extend our condolences to all firefighters. Um, thanks, Frank. That was... Uh, that was amazingly wonderful for you to bring up. Thank you. Um, okay, let's see. Um, if it's okay, I'm going to um, go out of order because I think that four and five will be quick, and then we can have our conversation about um, agenda number three. Um, so number four is the discussion of the Main Street Quarter Special Town Meeting article. If I'm correct, John, we don't really have... Um, I put it on the agenda when I called the meeting quickly when the special town meeting was announced in case we needed to take any action, but I don't think we do. Nope, no action taken. Or needed. Nope. So the planning board doesn't have any particular action in this. Did anybody come tonight to speak to the Main Street Quarter special town meeting article to provide input on that? Okay, hold on one second. I'll, I'll go with Frank, but then come on forward, Brian. Yeah, go ahead, Frank. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on one second, Brian, okay? Huh? Standing mic for the guests. Standing mic for the guests? Okay. I didn't know the protocol. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just don't start singing. Oh, okay. keep your eyes. Listen to my voice. You don't want that. So my uh, reason for coming tonight is I have a quick question. I'm sorry. Just protocol. Yeah, Brian Herr, uh, Hayden Rose Street. Um, the planning board in the past, I believe, has endorsed the project before various town meeting votes uh, prior, right? I think. I don't know that That's my question. So if we yeah. have endorsed, if the planning board has endorsed, has not endorsed, whatever, I'd be interested in understanding what, that, what those votes were uh, from so the years past. We've had four or five articles over the 10 years or so we've talked about it. Yeah. And I'm just wondering where the planning board was on those. I know that the planning board has sent representatives to Boston with the town manager's office to meet with DOT uh, and speak in support of the project while in Boston, but I don't know what the official votes were here, if any. So, um, do you know if we've ever taken any official votes on this? In my tenure, I can tell you, um, we have heard about the project. We asked some questions, but we did. There was no action or vote that we took. But I don't know about previous. I I haven't been here for any town meeting votes, so I don't remember. <laughs> Planning board votes, prior, but you wouldn't have been here because you right. come after me. It certainly was discussed. It, it was discussed. So through the chair, yeah. would it be appropriate if I make a motion to uh, take a vote and send a letter to the select board uh, well, stating our opinion? Possibly, right? Possibly, but I don't. I to answer your question, I don't think we've taken any okay. official votes, but I don't know. 100%. I'm trying to remember myself, and I don't know. That's why. Yeah. Do you know Frank? From what I remember, we have voted for articles to support or not support. So that's a very good question, Ryan. But right now, it's, it's a different question in front of us for the special town meeting is uh, this board hasn't had an update on the current status of the project. Uh, I'm glad to see the police and fire and town manager and, and board, mem many members of the board selectmen here. Um, but we're looking forward to at some point having the town engineer give us an overview of where things are, are, are at because the last time we spoke about it I wasn't aware of some changes and it would be nice to have a, it all wrapped up in front of us uh, so we can understand it fully um, so we were expecting more information so this board as it's currently constituted, um, constituted would be able to make a more formal so agreement which we don't have the information for yet I'm just the time is jump, ticking here so I'm just gonna jump in I, I don't so from a process perspective I don't think we have a formal vote um, we could potentially vote to make a recommendation or something to town meeting, to special town meeting. yeah but I don't think we have a formal okay. town vote. do you have a request for us or a so the request would be um, if the board is inclined to look at whether or not they endorse the special town meeting process or the article that's maybe being proposed before special town meeting that's I'm not exactly sure what's going to come before us yet at special town meeting frankly so 
uh, just some dialogue and perhaps some input to the community about what we've done in the past or literally the last 20 years. And if there had been votes prior, I guess I'm just a little surprised that there wouldn't have been any planning board input in the past, but maybe there wasn't. We were actually Was talking there? about that, I think. Mr. Kamala's nodding his head oh. yes to what? That I'm surprised or that ah. there was planning board input? Please, go, please feel free to come forward. What? I have something to add when, I, when yes. there's a time. Yeah, but. Uh, I'm sorry. No one. So there, yeah, Mr. Kamala. I'll just I'll interpret here. Mr. Kamala has said that in past years there has been input from the planning board. A formal input from the planning board. Here we go. There we go. Good evening, through the chair. I believe at different stages when we were submitting applications for the TIP grant, there was formal support from the planning board. Formal votes of support, or a, so. a member of the board went with you. I believe there was there were official letters that came from the planning board. Okay, I, I we will research that and make sure everything else that goes beyond beyond an article. There's emotions and there's all kinds of other things that take place at, at town meetings. So uh, there's a lot of unknowns. What I do know, you know, as fact, is all that we've done to get here with this project, including spending a lot of our money and including spending a lot of state's money and include lining up all kinds of funding for this, including using monies from host community agreements that the planning board and everybody was involved in with Legacy Farms and the Muse. I mean, you can look across town government and you can see connections to supporting <coughs> and moving a project forward for a decade that now is at risk because certain folks are frustrated that they didn't get what they wanted at the meeting. I think it just opens up a huge can of worms for how we govern on all kinds of issues. Yeah, so um, I, it's, you, you didn't ask. This is a piece of unsolicited um, thought, not really advice. Um, but I think that there are two issues. One is the project, and somebody dispassionately, um, thoughtfully um, outlining what has happened, what the vision is, what has been spent, what will be spent, what will be accomplished, and the why sure. would be very helpful. Somebody else explaining um, and you have a bit of an expert on your board, somebody else explaining the easement process issue and concern. Um, and then I think the th for me, as a voter and a participant, the third issue is the how we govern, and that's really important to me as well. I respond to that a lot. Um, so I think that separating those out is, is helpful in, in the moment at special town meeting. Yeah, I think that uh, all of that has been done at prior town meetings. Right. We have discussed easements, we have discussed the how, the why, we've discussed the money, we've discussed the funding, we've done all that, to your point. I agree we're going to have to do it again, Yeah. but it's this whole notion of do it again that really was what rubs me the wrong way as a 20-year veteran of volunteering in this town. Yes, I um, just would. But we got to do it again, I hear you. We yeah, I would again. not tap into my frustration until after special time meeting. That's I right. think frustration drives a lot of passion, which I think <laughs> is good. Yes. Uh, the chair, if I could ask Ms. Uh, Lovelin, Brian, her a question. If this um, article to defeat, I think it's Article 27? 47. 47, were to occur, is there any opportunity for the town to uh, recoup its um, anything? Or are we dead in the water? <coughs> Well, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of because answers to that question, I think probably. The easement question um, is dependent upon Mass DOT and their standards for uh, widening. The it's required by state law to have easements. Required sure. to have state easements. So if we suddenly are without those easements, say by CBS or some of the other special areas in the downtown area, is there any chance that Mass DOT would approve a state highway or for improvements through the down, through, through Hopkinton? No. So the, as I understand it, the, the state funding, the eight million of the fifteen million or so that's coming uh, as part of this project, the overall cost, uh, that is tied specifically to the work that's been designed by the Mass DOT and the federal government including the bike lanes and the requirements for that now per uh, state and federal code. So all that's kind of in the mix. <coughs> to change any of that would end the whole process. Um, it's going to be uh, very difficult to recoup from this. Uh, you know, one op another option, here we go, folks. This is, this is the problem. We'll call another special town meeting. 
We'll go get 200 signatures. I'll go get 200 signatures. We'll call another special town meeting. And maybe someone will call another special town meeting after that, and another one after that. That's the problem. But That's I wouldn't think twice problem. about calling a special town meeting if we can't get people to show up because they're all busy doing their holiday activities. Follow-up question? I think that, hold on one second. I think that you make a point that it is incumbent upon everybody to encourage attendance at this special town meeting, despite the difficult timing. Over. Right. Yeah, Jane. So uh, my follow-up question is, is that if um, the DOT does not approve a new corridor, if we can't get the easements, does that mean that the town now has to acquire all of our costs for a new downtown? There's a lot of that question as well, Jane. You're, you should be a reporter because you're digging pretty deep into some stuff. Uh, I can tell you this, that the, the community, the Department of Public Works, the public safety officials, all of us, boards of, uh, select board members over the years, we've all deferred to a lot of stuff that needed to happen in this corridor because this project was on a path that was moving forward in a positive direction with positive outcomes at town hey, meeting votes, hey, not just in 2018, hey, Jane, remind you through me. Go but ahead. in prior years, uh, that has been, uh, a lot of work has been sort of put off because of this. So yes, if this does not if, if this does not play out well for the community, and we stall, uh, our funding goes away. As a result of that, you know, a lot of the work that we could have gotten done will not get done. But we're still going to have to clean up Main Street. And when we clean up Main Street, I've asked the, the engineers to get me hard numbers on what it'll cost to do just that basic work. I suspect it's going to be more than the three million dollars that we're on the hook for right now to get a whole new corridor, including getting an intersection straightened. If we don't do the state plan and we don't get that state money, the intersection will remain the nightmare that it is today. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Yeah, so, of course. Through the chair, yes. I would like to make that motion, but would you, should we do it now or should we wait till it comes up as number four? I'm sorry, until what? Number four, Main Street. Order. That's what we're talking about. We are talking about number oh, okay. four. I moved ahead in the agenda. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. To be fair, I'm, I, hear, I did come here to say something about this project. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, projects like this can be frustrating. They take years. Uh, it takes a lot of time. The professionals and the volunteers. Um, this, as a member of this board for most of, of all the length of this project, uh, I have questions <laughs> I, I haven't had answered. Um, and I don't think I'm going to get answers tonight, but I would like to air these questions again in front of some of the people who can maybe do something about it. Uh, I understand that the respite center crosswalk is staying. I'm not sure about that. Um, I know that there are uh, parking spaces in front of businesses that are being taken away because of the bike lane design. Um, I want to talk about that for a second. I've spoken to some of the businesses there. I do business with some of the businesses on Main Street. And when I spoke to them about this, they said, well, we, you can't fight town hall. They were really frustrated. Um, and I felt bad for them. Um, and then since then, we've done additional parking spaces in front of the police station, which is, I think, believe six or seven or eight, uh, which helps. But the businesses that thrive on parking, uh, the barbershop, insurance company, uh, they would be hindered uh, without uh, the parking spaces because of bike lanes that uh, I don't think are needed the way they're designed. I think a lot of the feedback that we're getting from the abutters and people in town that ride bikes is that dual bike lanes in that format don't work. I've seen it in Cambridge. Uh, it's just, it, that makes things more of a mess. The state law is that every road in our state has a bike lane theoretically on each side of the street. If we did more to mark those bike lanes with signage and street markings uh, that would go a long way to help safety of people who do <coughs> ride bikes in the street. Uh, and I'm just talking straight lines to, to make bike lanes as opposed to painted over lanes that are slippery for bike riders to, to ride on. And I don't think the painted over lanes have been removed. I think they're still painted over from what I saw of the latest design, but I may be incorrect. Um, the sidewalk in front of the post office has not been addressed. The sidewalk in front of the post office on Cedar Street could be widened because that's in the towns right away. And it's not part of any plan that I've seen. And it's really frustrating because most of the traffic I see in town is on Cedar Street 
coming up the hill and it backs up all the way to the bottom of the hill. Um, if we could widen the, the top of Cedar Street where there is town property that's covered over by an extra wide sidewalk, that would be great. Um, and I have a couple questions about the difference between easements for construction, which is understandable. This construction, there's going to be need to lay down tools and move things around and implements of construction. And then, the diff then there's the taking, forever taking, where some people are losing their stone walls are being moved back and, and they're losing portions of their front yards they'll never get back. And, and that's something that I don't think the, anyone's listening to. Um, that every every letter I read, every person I talk to, has a concern that I don't think is being addressed. And sure, you can blame the the letter that went out that you know pe asking people to donate their property and, and all that was maybe scary for people, and maybe work them up. But there are valid questions behind their concerns, um, and I would like to eventually get this information answered. I'm, I'm not expecting it right now, but if you have any answers right now, uh, mm -mm. through the chair? No. No, that's not what this is about. Um, but other people, I think, raise their hands to um, speak. Come on for it. So just, no, you can't be heard at home. Well, he's coming Sorry. up just a point on clarity on something Frank said. You would like to make a point? Yes. Um, I believe that you said widening of the sidewalks. You mean narrowing of the sidewalks and widening of the road? The, the sidewalk in front of the post office is extra wide, and partly it's in the town's right of way. Yes. Um, and there's a newspaper article in Hob News about this uh, that's pointed it out consistently What's over that? the years that the sidewalk in front of the post office on Cedar Street yep. contains space that we could use for roadway without. So you, want to so narrow you, the you meant narrowing the and sidewalk widen the and widen the street. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just to be yeah, I appreciate okay. that. Thank you. Yep. Good question. Yes, Mr. Catino. You know, one David Joseph Road. Um, I, I just uh, called when, when people weren't sure whether or not the, the planning board in, in prior years has supported the project. I called uh, the former chair, former vice chair, uh, Fran De Young, and he said that the uh, planning board had um, endorsed the uh, the downtown project in, in, in prior. So we'll we will find the anyway, yeah, we'll find the agendas and, and the notes and the votes. Okay. Okay. But but to 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 address that, that last uh, comment uh, by uh, by Frank, um, the the end of Cedar Street is what is being widened, and there is going to be a turning lane there. And when we were talking about the 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 uh, parking spaces, I believe there are 108 parking spaces now, and at the end there's actually going to be 110. There are actually are going to be even more parking spaces. And when it comes to the bike lanes. That's that's the the new live work and play whole aspect of the of the state now, and they require, um, you know, we're talking about green. They, they, they require uh, bike lanes, and if we wanted to split, that's a design choice. Frank, 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 Frank please. Sure. If we wanted to split the bike lanes and have one on either side, then we lose through a lot of parking chair, spaces. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Sorry. That's then all right. we lose even more parking spaces. Um, you know, and, and you know, with, with the with the temporary easements, you know, some of those, some of that is just so that if if uh, somebody had to stand and, and some or walk across somebody's uh, lot, uh, somebody's um, lot line in order to put a sidewalk in or something, we have to have temporary easements. And as far as the, the permanent easements go, if some if if a stone wall has to be moved, they will absolutely recreate that stone wall exactly the way it was. And then when people were talking about the term of the easements, the project is going to be two, two, season, two building seasons long. And if, when they were asking for five years, it's be so that we have some guarantee. If we only did it for two seasons and then to just two years and then somebody's stone wall falls down, we can't go back to the contractor. Or if their tree dies, we can't go back to the contractor. So that just gave us an extra 36 months to go back, at, go back after people if something happens that we didn't like. So I don't remember you had a you had a whole bunch of stuff, and I was just trying to hit some of them that yep. that I remember. But yep. being in my 60s, I can't remember all of them. You're no. all right, John. You're I would do right. the tape and try and help. Hold on, um, Amy. Would you take a minute to um, talk about what you found in terms of uh, towns working with businesses to mitigate? We could potentially contemplate some work in that regard. Mm -hmm. 
So um, a lot of states and cities have a business survival guide during road construction, and they come up with a very comprehensive plan to help the businesses during construction. And I brought this to Zach. I don't know if they discussed it. Yeah, a little bit. That there might be some need to um, waive the. Right now, we don't allow uh, temporary signs for more than 30 days, and we don't allow off-premises signs. But that during construction, businesses might really need to put a sign a few a few doors down, saying where to how to get in, how to park. And that, so I hope the town is going to be doing. I hope the town is going to be doing that, but um, I haven't heard yet. I, I hope maybe there'll be some info at town meeting. Yeah, it was a good idea to uh, to publicize. Yeah, please. And then, then we're going to have to wrap this one up. But. <coughs> We're on Nestor, Street. Hello, Good everyone. Evening. So um, I just wanted to comment on um, a couple things that I've heard. One is the issue of stone walls being moved. <coughs> um, and while from my understanding is while that there are walls being moved is under a permanent easement, the property owners have actually agreed to that. And they've, they've given their assent. They don't have an issue with it. It would be rebuilt. Um, the other thing is, <clears throat> we do have an issue, well, not an issue, but there are certain property owners where they have fences or property that's actually on the town right of way or on town property. And for the town to actually exercise their rights, um, yes, the wall gets moved or the fence gets moved, but it stays entirely on town property. Uh, this is just basically people who have been able to enjoy having property that's not being used and claim it as their own. So I think um, there's, there's a lot of details out there and I think that uh, actually a comprehensive presentation is, uh, is required. I think it's going to be very it's, helpful. I think, um, yeah. And a dispassionate answering of questions. I mean, it, it is frustrating. I've been in town government longer than Mr. Hur. That's a long time. Um, <laughs> And I, I tap into the frustration of, uh, you know, re-explaining and re-answering questions, but there is so much value in hearing people, even if, even if you're frustrated by the questions, um, and then having people prepared to capably and, and confidently answer each and every one. I agree. And also, I mean, I just want to throw it out there, now speaking as a, as a business owner in the downtown area, it's going to be inconvenient. I think we all understand that, but having gone through, um, <coughs> having gone through renovations of my own at my house, while while it's going on, yes, it's difficult, but there's a crown jewel at the end. Hopkinton was just rated number one community in, in Massachusetts to live in, and I think this is only going to bolster it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Jane. Okay, I think I can shed some light on Frank's comments about the bike lanes. As a chair of the Upper Charles Trail Committee, go through me, right? go through you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I can um, tell you that we came into this process late. <coughs> the town has been um, negotiating and trying to solve this downtown problems probably since I think since the 1950s. Um, it was basically about three or four years ago that we met with the DOT and town officials and um, multiple other agencies to, because of our charge from the select board to include the center trail in the Upper Charles Trail going from Milford to Ashland. The only way to do that is to go east from the center trail. In order to do that, we met with the DOT and we could not, they would not allow us to cross the road by Hopkinton Lumber because it is within so many feet of an existing traffic light. For our trail, we need to be able to accommodate flashing lights just as they do with the Milford Trail and they will not allow so many of these lights within so many feet. Mm -hmm. We could not do that. So we had to come up with an ulterior um, plan that was unique and we did that and we asked them as long as you are trying to as long the mandate is that you need a five foot bike lane on one side and a five foot bike lane on it on the other side and we said well if you're not going to allow us to cross this road here to allow for a crosswalk 
why can't we put both lanes, combine them? And they said, well, we've never done that before. And I said, that's not good enough. Let's come up with a different plan. How can we make this work? And they did, and they came up with an elevated bike lane. So it is two directional, but it is perfectly safe because it's elevated. It's not in the traffic lane. And it is separated from the pedestrian lane. And what we're trying to do here is accommodate safety for not only our school kids that get out of school early release, but our mothers who are trying to push baby carriages and people who are trying to accommodate businesses and two-lane directional bicyclists who can safely travel in a separated lane, separated from parking spaces and the travel lane. And the other comment was, was that, well, you're going to be crossing gas station and existing driveways. Well, look at the current situation. The cyclists are already crossing those existing driveways and existing gas stations. What we are trying to do is make it safer. And that is the ultimate motive, is to make it safe. Okay. So, Thank you. End of story. All right. So, Dave, you wanted to suggest. Yes, I would like to make a motion. Um, that we sent a letter to the selectmen with supporting this project. With no mention to the town meeting, that's just that we, how we stand on this project. I second. Is there a discussion? Of course there is. Um, I looked at November 27th, 2017 minutes. That was a presentation on this. There was, was no us. vote taken. No vote. Yeah, right. um, that's not to say there wasn't a vote taken previously. That's just the right. one that Amy pointed uh, me yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's so the one I remember. remember. Yeah, that's kind of how we all remember, just a presentation yeah. and no vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it actually happened twice that Dave came in. Discussion? Uh, I said discussion. Um, so seriously, Frank, you've had a ton of time on this, and we do have to move on to a bunch of people so quickly. Discussion about Dave's motion. Yes, quickly. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we have enough information uh, to, I don't have enough information to support or not support the project as it stands because I don't think any of us have the full picture um, and I don't think we will, it's not like we will have that until the special town meeting. Uh, so I would not feel comfortable supporting or denying this. But I will say, I don't think we're that far apart as a town. I just think we should listen to each other and what's being said by those that are in opposition and why and make those adjustments. Because if it sounds like it's all or nothing, that's not the best way to move forward. Thank you. So, yes. If I may, and, and you know, uh, my concern here is that we don't know what the article is going to be. We haven't had a formal presentation of some kind. So even if we're taking some sort of straw vote of how we feel about it, I don't really know what we're evaluating in that discussion. Um, and, and personally, I, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate for this project. I'm a cyclist. Um, to me, this is not about a bike lane. It's about a multi-use path and the extension of the center trail. But I just, as a board, I struggle a little bit with what exactly we're voting on and evaluating. Uh, in order to, to carry forward um, in, some, in some way for, for town meeting. So I, I would actually, and, and I'd also say that I think that even taking a vote, the result is if not, a people, not enough people vote in support of it, then that could be construed to mean something different than, than what I think is, might actually be intended. So I'd actually recommend not taking a vote on this and letting the details flush themselves out um, in, in town meeting where we have a full picture of information and, and if we want to speak as individuals at town meeting, then we can do so. So we just for process, we're going to take a vote. We're going to we hear from vote. the rest of the board first. No, but I mean, what? We're just going to hear on your motion. Okay, sure. Okay. I agree with Gary. That's it. I agree with Gary. We're going to have a complete presentation at town meeting. The residents that wrote the petition can be heard, and then I don't feel comfortable voting on it tonight myself. I would abstain if we vote. Yeah. So I also agree with Gary. So that sort of calls it. Um, okay. But that is not to say that individually we might not enthusiastically support the vote. I can say towards another point that Mr. Herr made really capably, um, I really struggle with the concept of overturning previous town meeting votes that have been so long standing and have sort of footed 
the work that has gone on over years, whether I felt great about the individual votes or not, that happens all the time. Um, so um, I'm conf conflicted and want to understand better um, what that means to overturn, previ overturn previous town meeting votes. And I will also say um, that when we had the presentation <coughs> in 2017, it was the town engineer, it was the engineer in charge of the project. I asked some of the same questions I had asked at a public meeting of the engineers, and they did not have the requisite data to answer those questions, and I am not an engineer. So I really feel strongly that it was a poor showing um, and we could have expected better. And I sure hope that at special town meeting on December 9th, people come prepared to answer all, every question, all the specifics, and make their case for why this project is necessary, important, and uh, a go forward position. So the end result from what I'm hearing from people is I will uh, withdraw my motion, okay. but I would like to comment that I don't think we've done our job properly. We had Dave come before us. We all asked questions. We said, oh, it sounds good. No big deal. Time went by. We didn't say that. <laughs> we didn't say that. Well, we didn't say that, but there was no major, there was no major. We asked questions. We asked, we asked questions. them to bring, bring information back. We did. In my, in my opinion, yep. in my opinion, I thought that we, we weren't proactive from that point. I think that's fair. Yeah, we weren't proactive from that point, and now we're kind of behaving exactly like the town as a whole and saying, oh, we don't have enough information, should we? But we, to Mr. Hurst's point, we should trust the process. We are part of that process. We, we've gone through this process. So this is just my opinion. Yep, point, I, point we'll, we'll me, Dave. I appreciate motion. that. Yep, I appreciate that. Um, okay, so I thought that that would be quick, and I was very confused. <laughs> um, so thank you all for commenting on that. Um, I hope people do attend December 9th. I think it is real important on a number of levels that we um, that we come and, and we affirm the process as it is uh, structured. Um, I will entertain a motion on the minutes of September 23rd. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So now we're going to discuss um, uh, agenda item three, it's the special town uh, meeting warrant article for the acceptance of Legacy Farms Road North in response to school bus pickup drop off safety issues. So, Mr. Yeltsin, take us away um, from the process perspective for the planning board. So, the planning board uh, has gotten the petition from the select board. Uh, the hearing for the select board is on the 19th yeah. to vote on this uh, petition and the planning board can vote to recommend that the select board move it to a town meeting or um, approve the layout of the road is I think what it actually would be uh, or they could the board could vote not to do so okay. can you repeat the date I'm sorry the 19th of November next Tuesday correct yeah that's a is that right next Tuesday? that's yeah the select board hearing is the 19th 7 30 p.m is the public hearing the hearing is in the administ or the hearing notice is in the administrative files so Over. to be clear the planning board does not have an article going forward on this but we are responding to a citizens petition article correct okay um so yes frank have they actually passed it in with the signatures yes yes okay. it was it was received uh the signatures were verified I see. a notice to the owner which is roy was sent uh, seven days before the, the hearing, so that was taken care of. Now I believe the next hurdle is getting a plan. I think it's I think it's seven days before the town meeting is when they need it by. Not necessarily seven days before the hearing from the select board, but the, the actual town meeting. Who wants that action item? That I believe would be the petitioners and the owner. It would be the responsibility of the petitioners, but obviously the owner would also have a role. And they know this? I believe so. I believe it's been communicated to them. Yeah. Sometimes dealing with the town is new for people. Yeah. Yep. Anybody on the board have particular comments or questions before we open it up to the public? I guess. Um, do we have any other meetings between now and town meeting? Uh, or we have the twenty fifth of November. We do, we do have the twenty fifth of November. Okay. So 
we could potentially wait to make any take any action on this until then correct okay how however what is our role at the select board's public hearing so I actually I take that back the recommendation would be to the select board yeah. so they're meeting on the 19th so if you if you vote on the 25th obviously it would be too late and the article is being signed on the 22nd so it would either be a go or no go by that time so okay yeah. so we would have to come up with a recommendation tonight if we were going to have we would have to have up or down i suppose here do you have any thoughts comments i um i fully support this um petition to accept the legacy farms north road um and um i do think that we have the responsibility as planning board to um to ensure that the contingencies are appropriate or in place to make sure that once the construction is completed um, that 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 uh, the developers you know do the proper finishing touches that are, are done for a road but I think that this is special <coughs> this is a special circumstance yeah Thank you. so when we last discussed this our uh, head of the DPW was um, spoke uh, against doing so um, and I guess for, for me to provide some clarity here is I'd like to understand a little bit more about not so much what the resistance has been in the past but what it would take from a DPW perspective and from a town perspective to do this and protect the interests of the town along the way because I, I don't know if we've actually had that conversation and um, and I, I just, I don't have a good sense as to, to what it would take to, to protect the town's interests if this road is accepted. So through the chair, just to answer a little bit of that, and I'm, I'm sure uh, Mr. Wesseling could talk more to it, but Beta prepared a letter and a memo, which is in the administrative items folder that outlined the work needed to be done. That was in 2016. We have not gotten an updated uh, estimate as to what needs to be done but there was a bond paid that i believe was seven hundred and seventy six thousand dollars to complete the work okay but i, I sorry through the chair yeah. I, I i believe that mr mcdowell was also made some informal offers to provide the additional uh you know any additional monies that that, that might cover the anticipated costs if for some reason things didn't he may through. have he may and, have and I don't he's know not here either so i i don't i, I just you know, I, I want to make sure that our, our town interests are protected, but it, it feels to me like there has to be some way to to move this forward. Should I ask Mr. Westerling directly if there's a way? Sure. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> he Mr. Is. Westerling, I hate to put you on the spot, but here I go and do it. Well, he didn't actually wear clothes to blend in. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's running away now. He's working. <laughs> He's on the job. So the question really is, is how do we move forward with this somewhat different, interesting, ticklish problem and protect the town's interests if there's a way? So through the chair, I think that's the biggest challenge that we face. We're trying to balance the safety of the children in the neighborhood, which we all have as our utmost important factor. But we're trying to also protect the town and not having the town at risk. As Mr. Gelsich said, there's at least seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollars worth of work to be done there. Who is going to complete that work? Um, just for the record, he didn't say that there was that much work to be done. He said that's the amount of the bond. Why? To, okay. Sorry, to, if I may clarify, that is it's kind of one and the same. The beta reviews the work that needs to be in done 2016. in two thousand and sixteen and then estimates how much that work right. would cost yeah, yeah, and that's what the bond I is. Mm -hmm. So that may now be at the prevailing wage. If the town Let's say, for example, the town is tasked with completing this because it is the town asset. At prevailing wage, that could be well over a million dollars. So who will pay for that? And it has to be an ironclad guarantee that that money will not come out of the taxpayers. Um, the other question is, uh, this winter, if we were to accept it in its current condition and we put town assets on that roadway, plows and sanders, um, you know, I, I don't know, I haven't been out there to inspect the roadway to see if it's completely constructed to a level where it's safe to put town assets out there. Um, so my recommendations in the past have been, is the road ready for acceptance? In other words, does it meet the planning board's rules and regulations? 
we have uh, made negative recommendations based on cracks and sidewalks until they're repaired. So there's a million dollars worth of work here. I don't know how that will get done. I don't know who's going to pay for it. I don't know who's going to do it. So that there's just too many questions here. And as the Director of Public Works, for me to be able to answer those questions, um, I'm not prepared to, to be able to answer those. So this. here's a question. We had a uh, huge road opening, and we have opened it and invited all through traffic to kindly utilize that road. How is it that we came to the determination that it was safe and uh, possible to do that? That's two and a half years ago. We had a big ribbon cutting with state and town officials all out there clipping the ribbon and inviting through traffic. So how do we, how do we know we're safe doing that? I don't believe that I was part of that decision. I think that, that I think that may have I think that may have been part of uh, an agreement with the planning board that when it got up to base course that it would sure be open to the public to alleviate the, the traffic that was going was downstairs uh, downtown. So I, that is the central question for me: is that we have opened it up, we do invite through traffic, we are um, appreciating the benefit of that, and that through traffic is flying uninterrupted past school children as they load and offload because there's no mechanism currently for stopping traffic while those buses are loading and offloading kids. But I appreciate your time. So, to the chair, I can follow up. Um, just a hypothetical situation here, I realize this is hard to answer, but if <coughs> Beta goes out and does a new assessment and says that there is a million dollars of, uh, of, of remaining work to do to this road. Um, and if the developer offers to put the additional sum um, into a bond to cover those expenses, um, then does that address your um, concerns of, of protecting the interests of the town? I think that it, through the chair, I think that that answers who will pay for it. But it doesn't answer who will actually conduct the construction, who will manage the construction. Will that become another town project that we have to manage, that we have to put out to bid? Similar to what we did when we received the MassWorks grant of $5 million to build, build the roadway up through base course, um, but that would add additional costs of a design engineer to design the final construction plans, an engineer to oversee the project, an engineer to manage the contract and the, the activities of the contractor that's out there. So that would be another one hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, and who would pay for that? Um, I'm coming around. So I've met with some of the neighbors, and I promised I'd ask them this question to you, John, specifically through the chair. Um, the developer's not here, but in the past he's mentioned spending fifty grand a year for a shuttle bus. And if he's willing to do that for five years, that's a quarter million dollars. <coughs> Would that be sufficient to reduce the risk on the town for accepting the road? Uh, and it sounds like you're saying it probably could be up to 12, 14, instead of you know 1.4 million as opposed to you know 750, whatever we have now in the bond. So is there a, a level? Is there an amount for the bond that you would feel? most comfortable that would cover can i just <coughs> can i just suggest that we are off roading into the hi wild hypotheticals now we don't have the information from the With town the engineer not being here but and, and to can i just say too that um mr mcdowell did call say that um unfortunately he did not know about the meeting tonight um and is invested in helping solve this problem um but he couldn't be here tonight so so uh, I don't see the neighbors here now. I see, I see other neighbors, but uh, I asked about the uh, alternative ideas, and one of the alternatives was using the lot by the old Peach Street and uh, maybe putting up a circus tent, maybe having uh, the children wait there and have a parking lot there, but that's only six or eight cars, and they'd be parking along the lower side of what used to be Franklin Road. I never uh, heard the circus <laughs> tent idea. No. Where have I been? And, uh, with music. Because it would be a temporary measure. Um, and that's a town-owned 
part of the road. The Hop uh, Hoppington owns that part of the street. So we, it could be a bus stop. It could be it could be a parking lot, temporary parking lot constructed. And developers mentioned being willing to do that. Uh, the neighbors have, uh, some feedback I've gotten from the neighbors as well as it's further for the high school kids to walk. But while they're in high school, they can walk 800 feet more, whatever it is. Uh, but it's the younger kids. And one of the, the benefits of living in Hopkinton, I've heard, is that the sense of community that we have, that you have in that neighborhood that we have in our town is that we help each other and that different parents shuttle the kids to the end of where they currently have the bus now, but that can be problematic if there's a problem, some one kid's sick or another kid's sick, you don't know, and it takes longer. Um, and another thing that we haven't really talked about yet is that as more units come online, there's going to be, right now it's 35 cars a day, uh, there's going to be 50 cars a day or 60 cars a day uh, pretty soon over, over the next year. So looking for ways to help our neighbors um, if we could have maybe we can't really decide anything here it uh, sounds like other than what we can do to move forward but we're just looking for other ideas we are looking for problem-solving ideas yes Dave if, if I could just oh, address yes that, of course here. yeah uh, I also met with two of the residents that are that are here this evening and we talked about uh, some of the offer some of the options that were mentioned before and evaluated and they were they were dismissed for various reasons um, and I think that the current one that the residents are looking at the current option is the acceptance by the town and for me it, it, I'm only standing here as the director of public works looking at it from a construction perspective all the other factors that have to be considered those are those are other decisions that have to be made by other parties so we just need to determine really if the town can sustain buses and town town vehicles because certainly other traffic is being sustained really well. Dave. So I think, Muriel, you made some good points about the length that the road has been open for two and a half years with traffic through there. So um, And we welcome that. We and, want that and, to happen. And in my opinion, let's just get the road accepted and do it the right do way. Do what we need to do. Um, we, to Frank's point, we were looking at possible alternative ideas but that was when we didn't have an STM in front of us that we right. thought we were going to have to wait right. a long time but now that we have an STM in front of us let's let's do it right and to Gary's hypo uh, hypothesis hypothetical sorry. hypothetical thank you <laughs> Gary's hypo um, you had mentioned the developer covering the cost and I, I think hypothetically we could get the developer to cover the cost of the the project plus the additional administration fees. I mean, I think that would be a, a good solution. I think solution. we need to. I think we need to have an updated yeah. estimate for yeah. sure. I think I we think should. That that's my possible. final summary. I think we should just find a way to do it and let's stop talking about this. I agree. Um, I use that road two or three times a day. Um, it's. It does need some work. There's a drainage problem at the bottom of the bridge that needs to be addressed. Um, and I don't see that how we can't come to some sort of responsible acceptance of this road with a memorandum of understanding or some sort of yeah. legal, e legal <coughs> language that says that the developer um, will carry these costs at the end of the day. And from everything I've heard from Roy, he's willing to do that. But you know, if we can get both parties to sign some sort of legal language, I don't see why this can't happen. Thank you. Okay. So, um, yes, indeed. Thanks, John. Not Mr. Kamalo, certainly. <clears throat> I see that you're wearing your jacket. Is it, are we getting frozen out of here on purpose, or? I'm looking for Dave. Um, again, through the chair. This is a very tough conversation. Uh, as John stated, everybody here is committed to protecting our children. And at the same time, <coughs> I think you've asked the appropriate questions in terms of the risks that are posed to the town by accepting this roadway earlier than what our regulations provide for. And to that end, I have a question for the planning board. I have not asked staff this question, uh, it's just come up now as we're discussing. 
accepting this road at this point, would that require the planning board to waive any of your regulations? So I believe you probably know the answer, but we're going to go ahead and ask town council the right way to do it. But but don't 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 disappear. So I happen to know that two and a half years ago you were at the road acceptance, and you invited all town dignitaries and state dignitaries to come down and clip the ribbon, and invited the traffic through. Um, would you consider as an alternative option that we take that road out of service? Um, so that the kids are safer until you are comfortable formally accepting the road. Except to residents. I think if we're looking for a solution to the issue before us, I don't think that's the solution. So let's and find should, the solution. Exactly. And, and I should point out, in town, we have many private ways. This is not uncommon to have a private way in town. We don't have private ways that serve as through Streets. traffic intentional ways. We don't have those. It so happens that the town's planning process defined that road as a bypass. It does. It did. So it's a unique situation. I think Correct. we agree on that. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Um, I think that there are residents here who would like to speak on this, so I'm going to invite people to come forward one at a time. Um, for those that are new to the process, um, please introduce yourself and your address, and then uh, go ahead and ask your questions or make your comments to the chair. Um, good evening. Ravi Gordy, 15th Sport Street. Good evening. Um, so I think uh, a lot of you guys already uh, touched upon um, a lot of points that we, I wanted to, we wanted to raise as a community. Um, I don't think there's any disagreement about uh, that there's a safety concern and we all want to solve it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, the, there were some questions or some, uh, some discussion about the, uh, the possible alternatives, so the moving the bus stop. And uh, as you know, I think uh, one of the documents that was shared for this discussion, for this meeting, was the survey responses. I think uh, some people clicked on a different one, thinking it's the other one. So that's why it's 93. Otherwise, it would have been 100. But the, there's a unanimous uh, agreement from, from our, uh, everybody that responded that it doesn't make sense because <coughs> we feel like it doesn't uh, address any of the safety concerns that we have. So it's because um, the, the students have to walk longer, especially in the winter uh, in the icy sidewalks with carrying their school bags um, across a, an intersection that is a very dangerous intersection, especially when it's moved closer to 135. It's right next to 135. There's not enough parking spots to accommodate one, one, uh, 30 cars like I think you mentioned before. 35. 35, yeah, and potentially going uh, going up uh, in, in the future. Uh, so, I mean, we can come up with a few uh, few other reasons which actually don't uh, make it, doesn't make uh, sense to move, move the bus stop. The other alternative, uh, a private shuttle or a private bus. We've actually explored, explored multiple options uh, to actually do that, but unfortunately we've come short of finding any um, service that would actually uh, be willing to do that for the $50,000 cost. So that was the challenge there. Uh, that would have totally uh, helped solve the issue, uh, at least in the uh, short-term basis. So those are the w alternatives that we pursued and unfortunately kind of uh, hit it dead in there. Um, and I think as um, you mentioned, we collected the signatures to uh, at least to have this discussion uh, be discussed at the, as a warrant article in the special town meeting. The, I just wanted to clarify from our standpoint, uh, what we wanted is, that, uh, we wanted to have just all the different parties uh, aligned here, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if we cannot get the, the road accepted as a public road right now, as is, then we at least want to look at uh, what's uh, preventing, uh, you know, Mr. Westerling had some really valid concerns. so. Can we potentially explore something like uh, maybe making an exception to the bylaws to have this accepted and maybe uh, identify the different contingencies upon which 
the road will be accepted, or potentially even changing the bylaws um, so that it would make it easier to uh, have this accepted later on. Um, so those those were the alternatives that we wanted to propose. And um, if there's other uh, potential solutions that the board can recommend, that yeah, we're definitely open to that. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Um, okay. So um, I wrote down three things that I, I want to make sure that we um, ensure that we're looking at. Um, to Mr. Westerling's point, an update, and Mr. Gelser's point, an updated uh, assessment from the town engineer. So we know exactly what work is in front of us. Or beta, right? Beta, right. Yeah, I'm sorry, beta. Not beta. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. Arkansas, engineering consultant. Uh, Chair, could that include the additional cost that Mr. Westerling was talking about? I think about? it has to. Yes. I mean, I think okay. that's the point. Sure. I, I'm sorry, just to be clear, we yeah. need to know um, what actually we're asking. The entirety. Yeah. Um, and then um, it seems clear to me that we are me personally that we're dealing with sort of a hybrid situation it's an unusual situation um, and I would suggest that the Planning Board contemplate asking Town Council um, to advise us on how best to accomplish this if it is possible to do um, and then recognizing that it may not be possible at special town meeting I think that um, this gentleman's point um, that we look at um, a bylaw change to accommodate this special circumstance, not to change the bylaw for every road, but to accommodate this special circumstance isn't a terrible idea. I don't know that it is the right idea, but it's not a problem. It, it makes sense to think about um, in terms of uh, bylaws or what has to happen. If it can't happen now, what has to happen by annual town meeting to um, appropriately solve it? Um, I think at least were the three things that around in my just, head. just a point of clarity on that last point mm -hmm. could it be a waiver instead of a bylaw change yeah whatever I mean if if a right if if town council comes back and tells it that, that tells us that there is a clear process that people can understand and people can impact and people can participate in and we can accomplish that's great um, if there is something that we need I anticipate that there could easily be something we need to do that is um, a little bit more um, yeah, oh yeah, more intentional. There, you know, some change has to happen in order to be able to accommodate. I don't know that our bylaws were written contemplating a through road. Um, so I just want to make sure that we at least um, tee up those three moving pieces going forward. Uh, does anybody have any other mm -hmm. suggestions? Just, just to echo that, it sounds like immediately we have we have two asks. One is for for Beta to give us an updated. Um, cost to complete and then the second and this I'm just going to echo what you said but with town council I'd like to hear from them not so much an assessment of whether or not this is a good idea but what would they what is it going to take to accept this road and I know that's a subtle difference but I, I just um, you know it's easy to say we can't do it because X Y and Z but what would it take to, to do it and then the third one to me, those are the immediate ones. Yes, um, I agree. The third one I think is, is longer term and it depends on what comes back in terms of uh, a cost estimate and what yeah. town council comes back with in terms of um, what potential pathways there are here. Yeah. Um, if they are no, if there are no pathways, then I think that's when we start to contemplate your, your Yes, option. no, of course. I just throw that out there for okay. sort of the future. Um, it's not clear to me that this is actionable at special town meeting. Um, and it may be I want to make sure we explore it fully and I know that we're on sort of a hurry up schedule that's the problem with special town meetings but um, I want to make sure we're, we're as prepared as we can be um, I think that I can safely go to um, the public hearing next week and assert that the Planning Board is in favor of finding a way to appropriately accept this road and protect the town's best interests um, also in that when we're talking to the um, town engineer I think that um, it should be stated we should be connecting with the developer and make sure he's working with the town engineer to understand 
um, what is potentially in front of us. And you know, there's a third, there's a there's a, a third immediate piece, and okay. then based on what those estimated costs are, we've also got to go back um, to the developer and yes. assess whether he's willing to yes. put up additional bonds to cover yes. those costs. Right. 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 From so, my perspective, I think you guys covered my concerns. <coughs> it's a risk management issue. It's a developer issue, but it's also a community issue, a hybrid. Yeah, it is. It is. And, uh, and we're all benefiting from that bypass road. Um, I have used it myself, um, and I live on the other side of town. But um, I can see that it is probably a huge benefit um, to folks who live on this, in that, this end of town. Um, so uh, I don't think we have, I don't think we have any votes to take or anything. Just action items. Uh, to recommend. Uh, a vote to recommend. Um, it would be a vote to recommend. I'm trying to remember what it would actually be a vote to do. Vote to recommend the Response. select board accept the layout of the the road. I believe because that's what they would be voting on at the 19th. Okay. In order to put it on. In order to put it on. Mm -hmm. Special town. Special it goes town. on special town meeting. This is a public hearing. It goes on the the warrant with or without the select board's recommendation, which is a key point. I almost look at this as the previous discussion we just had. If we don't have enough information, we shouldn't vote on it, right? Uh, There's too many moving parts. There are a lot of moving parts. I don't disagree. Sorry, with through the chair. Yeah. To, to John's point, though, that wasn't necessarily us supporting this article. That was us recommending to accept the layout, which, my I, I'm, which I think is different than us voting on whether or not we support have this we ever, article. Through the chair, sorry, have we ever asked, have we ever been asked to do this before? On roads? Yes. All the time. To accept the, the, for the select board to accept the layout? Yeah. I think that's the process. Did, didn't we do that roads? originally then? It's With different this? for special town meetings. It's different for special Just in terms of timing and timing. how the process is. Usually, I believe the, the article would come from either the subdivider the applicant and then go through the planning board mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I don't think it's significantly different than how it's usually done and even this is through the chair sorry this is a citizen's petition this is in our article right this is a citizen's petition I don't think yeah. we have to act on it in my opinion so um, we do have to vote to either recommend or not recommend the road layout right for the I mean it's board? it's a recommendation and I didn't get a clear indication from town council that it's required that the planning board recommend or not recommend. So, so just, however it's just, done in the past. Just for fun, um, the, town, the road layout is certainly a technical term, and you being an <laughs> engineer, can you just tell us what that means, the road layout? I know what it means in, for me. So the road layout is essentially the plan of, of the road. Um, the, the technical engineered plan of the road. Um, that's what the owner has to present before, seven days before a town meeting. Um, whether it's going to be able to make it in time for the select board hearing is unknown. Whether it's going to be able to be completed by town meeting is unknown. Um, but the layout itself is laying out of the road on the plan. So. If I may, to Mr. Westerling, um, I'm curious if you see any <coughs> risks associated with us accepting the road layout or recommending to accept the road layout, not actually accepting the road itself. And I'm just relying on our professionals here. I'm, you know, and I, I just want to make sure there's there's no additional risk to the town. <laughs> Maybe Mr. Kamala should come forward yeah, too. Yeah, do you know. have an opinion too, Mr. Kamala? Because we're happy, the town is happy to hear what you have to say as well. Uh, through the chair? Yeah. I'm going to defer to the town planner. <laughs> <laughs> That's what just got whispered in your ear. I love it. Did, oh, no. The question was, uh, have we seen the layout for the road? 
I have not, and that's that's one of the issues. Is that well, we have okay. accepted it with a formal ribbon cutting, and <laughs> people are whizzing down it. So I hope somebody has given some thought to the layout of that road. And through the chair, if I may, the yeah. the, the, the risk of opening it up to through traffic, that risk went to the developer. Mm -hmm. So the developer is at risk. If there's any problems with through traffic using that as a through street, um, what we're talking about now is a risk to the town. And so if, if, if nothing else happens, I know that when Roy was with, with me before, or next to me before the planning board in August, he offered to complete the road. Yeah. And it's, it's unfortunate that we didn't take him up on that offer because all of this discussion would be a moot point now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's incumbent on the town to encourage Mr. McDowell to complete the road as soon as possible. So even if there's a problem with the process for the special town meeting, that come May, the road will be that much closer. And then all these questions about who's going to complete it, who's going to pay for it, those become moot and the town can accept it in May. So. Um I appreciate that point a lot. Uh, Mr. McDowell did assert um, in a phone call this afternoon that he already has contracted for the landscaping um, and I believe for the finishing of the road. Um, so um, that's at least a step forward, but we have to put all those pieces of information together for sure. Um, has the, the road in its two and a half years being used as a bypass been a liability for the town or the developer to the best of your knowledge through the chair to the town I can't I, I'm not aware of any issues that occurred out there any issues that we have seen we have brought to the developers attention for example there are two manholes that continually weep groundwater that have not been repaired uh, those will become icing problems this winter <coughs> for example if the town accepts it and there's an accident because there was an unfinished utility does that become a town liability so sure. there are those type <laughs> things and one of the uh, one of the beta letters from 2016 i think it was five or six pages long that had outstanding construction issues so there are there are things out there beyond just paving and raising structures and landscaping that we may or may not be aware of that are encountered through the process of construction So, yes. can I recommend that we take no action on this until we have those responses from our yes. peer review and our town council? Yes. Well, what about a middle ground? What if we support uh, the, the citizens' petition going forward to the special town meeting, uh, but as a board, we don't have the information yet to make a decision? That's kind of in the middle, but it's... Yep. I think we do need more information for sure. Um, and uh, we do have time between now and special town meeting to make our recommendation, a formal recommendation. We won't meet the, the, um, the uh, select board's deadline. For the 19th. Waiting for the 19th. For their, their um, I'm just a little concerned. Does that mean we don't... Um, satisfy the requirements for the citizens to take their petition forward I I can't imagine that the planning board not taking action would affect the <coughs> petition but I'd have to talk to count, town council on I that know it, it goes to sure. it goes to special town meeting no matter what if, if the signatures have been certified it goes to special town meeting but that I just, I'm it's a process question on. about the public hearing. Should we take a minute to just re let's read the re Yeah, let's reread the bi Let's do that. Let's make sure we know what we're doing. Thank you, Amy. You can come up to the mic. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Do I have to state my name again? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I think good discussion, but I... Again, from our standpoint, as you all know, we've been talking about this for three years now. Um, how can we expedite this? Because here's at least here's our, my biggest fear. Um, we don't do we don't act on this now. We don't have something concrete happen in the special town meeting. 
we're going to miss the main window. I'm not looking to get this town accepted as a public road. This, this uh, legacy farm sort of accepted as a public road by the special town meeting. I'm a little pragmatic too, <laughs> right? I know I'm not. Uh, so, but May 2020, that's when we're really hoping for mm -hmm. uh, for all the stars to align so that we can get something happen. What was your essential question? So my question is, um, what's the challenge with uh, changing the bylaws? Is is that uh, why is that a, a why would that be a problem? Because I see some gray cybers when I when I make make, make that point. So. I, I, Hold on, I, hold on a second. So I think just to answer your question, I mean, it, it isn't something that you, that is necessarily um, great policy to change by law to meet a circumstance. However, this circumstance is kind of extraordinary. So I don't necessarily recommend a change, but I would recommend studying um, whether a change is appropriate. Right, and, and obviously you all know this already that this this is like one of the largest developments in Central Massachusetts and you know, all the circumstances that warrant considering the, the change to the bylaws. So that, that was my question. Can yeah. I to the chair, can I yeah. comment on, yeah, just to be clear, correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't have to be a change to the bylaw because that's a long-term permanent thing. There's also an option of a waiver yeah. just okay. specifically oh, for your project. Absolutely. So, yes. so you, you don't have to use the bylaw terminology. Yeah. If, if I may, through the chair, the, the, to me, the, the reason I'm raising my eyebrows with the, the bylaw change is that that has to go through a town meeting. So, so you know, we don't have the authority the to just change the bylaw ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, so it has to go through a town meeting, and that's a long thirds. process to do so. I was hoping, if I may, I was hoping uh, that's what we would use the special town meeting to accomplish versus they use the special town meeting to uh, have the so, board accepted as a policy. So information gathering, find out what is needed. We're kind of, we really, um, you, it, we are very, very united in wanting to understand what is the most pragmatic, practical, um, protective, uh, in a 360 degree way, right? We want to protect, protect those kids, those families. We want to protect the town's interests. Um, and in my mind, protecting those kids and those families is protecting the town's interest. I read through those responses um, on the survey, and I was uh, really surprised to hear that there is at least one case of somebody, get, a, a child, getting hit by a car out there already. Um, and uh, I did not know that when I invested in this. Um, and I don't know the details, I just know that I read it as part of the survey responses. Um, and uh, it, it's not a question of liability. Obviously, that's a horrible liability for the town. It doesn't matter who owns the road at that point. It's a horrible liability. Uh, but it's much bigger than that. It's a question of, um, of protecting our kids. Um, and we all take that really seriously. Quick question for, yeah. through the chair. What is the process for developing or creating a waiver? So I, I don't know the answer. So I was actually, yeah. I was just going to say the same thing. I think that what will make everybody happy is if we just ask Roy to apply for a waiver for our next meeting, if we approve to, to allow him to finish the main road. And if we vote on that, then we approve the waiver and everybody's happy, right? <coughs> That's a really good idea to explore. Would a waiver go through the planning board? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, that be the process. So the uh, is this is about uh, process question, right? We need to know the process, but that's a great suggestion, I think. I think. It, it, right. it still would need a special town meeting or town meeting to. There always has to be a that town meeting sense. vote to accept a yeah. road. Absolutely. Right, but through the chair, there's. We've done this all the time. Developers come back for an yeah. additional waiver. This yeah. is no different, yeah. in my opinion. Right. It's a waiver of uh, to the standard subdivision process. This road it doesn't really fit the subdivision guidelines, right, right, I think. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah. Amy, so you were doing some I research for us. <laughs> John probably was too. Um, yeah. I don't. It is. It's confusing. Um, it's in the. Let's see. It's in the general bylaws about the presentation to the board of selectmen that no new street shall be acted upon at a special town meeting unless the petition has been signed by 100 people, so they have met that requirement prior to its presentation to the Board of Selectmen. So it seems like it's met that, but it's, and I don't see anything in the zoning bylaws 
but in the rules and regulations of the planning board for subdivisions, there's quite a bit, and it's, yeah. it's long. So if I may jump in, there's, there's requirements to accept a road in the subdivision regulations, which is, I think, what Dave was saying would mm -hmm. need to be waived. Um, in the general bylaws, there are procedures for accepting the roads and accepting private ways. And I think getting back to the original question is, does the planning board have to provide a recommendation? And there's no provision in the general <coughs> bylaws that says this cannot go forward unless the planning board provides a recommendation. It doesn't say that. Okay. It basically is uh, essentially maybe a courtesy or just standing policy that the select board refers it back to the planning board to get a recommendation. But it really is the select board that acts upon all of this. From what I can tell in this quick cursory reading yeah, of the general bylaws of town meeting. I was going to add too that it's usually written into the bylaws whether waivers are allowed for certain things or others. So I don't know that we can just grant a waiver unless it says that in the bylaw that we're, that we're allowed to. Um. Well, I think through the chair. Yeah. When you, the process you're talking about is after the road has been completed, that's Excuse when it gets approved. But hold on one second. Sure. I just want to explain to the oh, public yeah. we can no longer exit through uh, that exit, we can use the restroom facilities, but we can't leave through there or we will set off the alarm. Dave, I'm sorry to No, that's okay. I was just saying that I think there's two different states here, that the normal process is that the road gets completed, then it goes through town meeting to get applied, and we recommend on that right. approval. This is different. We're trying to get the road completed, so the developer would ask us for a waiver if it's okay to do that before the development's been completed, the rest of the development. Right. right. It, I, I think it's I think it's a good question to ask if it's possible right so I think just to answer what Amy was saying some bylaws like the zoning bylaw basically says this can be waived this can't be waived uh -huh. and otherwise it would be a variance the the planning board has the authority to waive any regulation within the subdivision or any requirement within the subdivision we do. regulations. Okay. Okay. Yeah, section so, 7.1 oh, so there you go we have, we, have we have the power it's a song right now <laughs> That's a really good question. I appreciate that. This board is so great um, as far as um, really critically pushing information around. I appreciate that a lot. Ms. Brown. Good evening. Uh, Mina Bharat, 230 Ash Street. Um, I first want to applaud the planning board for taking this difficult issue head on and showing leadership. Um, that's amazing. I think we are all grappling with the growth and related issues. And I think this is one of those, a byproduct of the growth and, of course, uh, a very special situation. Um, I'm wondering, you know, just hearing all of this, hearing, um, having spoken to some of the residents, um, understanding what Mr. Gelsick said, looking to see what all you are looking to figure out, and the timeline with the special town meeting. I'm wondering if the planning board would be interested or is, is it possible for the planning board to come up with a task force that is actually looking at this issue, maybe a couple of members from the board, uh, some of the other members uh, like uh, Mr. Catino or some of the members from the community uh, representing and coming together and figuring this out together, if that's a possibility. I just wanted uh, that for your consideration. Thank you. It's a really great idea. I appreciate that. Did anybody else from the public want to speak before we kind of wrap this up? No, John? It's our last agenda item. <laughs> it is. I mean, well, I don't, you, know, I'm not, you don't have to. I, just, no, no, I know no, you've no, been just, talking. Well, a lot of it's been said. And, and yes, it's, it's, this is, it is very complicated. But it's also very unique. This is the first time we've had a Mass Works grant. Or, 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 or a, um, a road built uh, up to uh, the, up to the base code <coughs> uh, Mass Works money. The uh, the town got money from this Mass Works grant. We got a road built. We opened it up two and a half years ago. Um, you know, whether we use a waiver or whether we, we, we can tweak a bylaw to add if, if state money was used to build the road, then it, then it automatically goes in for consideration by the planning board and the, and the, and the board of selectmen. But if there's something we can possibly do um, to accelerate the process, to maybe get a, a, a some kind of a change through at, at this at this special town meeting, so that we're set up to accept it in at the May town meeting, so it doesn't go another year. You know, I've been I've been with these with these guys since uh, last February, and um, trying to work out stuff, get, even just getting police details, everything to try. We, we try to get the the parking lot. Actually, that parking lot can hold uh, up to a couple hundred cars. If necessary, that uh, near the, near that um, 
and yeah, Frank's yeah. circus tent. I'm just asking. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, but that you know that 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 was only going to be a temporary fix, and these and these guys really want the road done. And 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 to to, to the chair's point, it is unique. And we have been using it, and there's got to be something we do. The developer's saying, you know, he'll he'll do whatever it takes. He'll put the money down. He'll fix it. He'll do we'll do whatever we need. So we just all have to pull together and try and see if we can do anything at this special town meeting to make it easier for the next town meeting and to to get it done. So that, I just you know anything that you guys can do, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank appreciate you very it. much. Thanks for thanks for having me come up. So then I wouldn't go home saying I didn't say anything. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that everybody is going to feel appreciative that I put them on the spot, but you're welcome. <laughs> you need somebody with closing comments. Yes, closing comments. Okay, so I think that we are um, we are with the residents um, and all the interested parties. Um, we really want to find a solution that makes sense. Um, in my mind, just speaking for myself. Um, a solution that makes sense that is permanent rather than a series of temporary um, solutions it makes much better sense to me and I think that this is tailor-made for some creative constructive critical thinking and uh, maybe a tiny bit out of the box solution finding problem solving um, and I applaud you for um, your uh, you know getting that that uh, petition put forward um, and your positive, you know, the ways that the neighbors in particular have been consistently um, putting forward information and politely asking for solutions and, and politely trying to work through the process despite the fact that the, the process has not necessarily been tailored um, to accommodate what you need. Um, I really respect and I really appreciate and uh, I for one and I know I know other members of the planning board are going to do our best to help find the right solution. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All those. Okay. Should, All those. Guess, what? Should we do any kind of vote to recommend if the town's interest can be protected or <coughs> Because we don't have enough clean information at the moment. I, I would at least like to f be able to forward to the select board that we are uh, united in our um, our solve interest it, to solving this in a permanent, safe, protective, constructive way. And uh, I will go to the get uh, town hearing. Council get town council involved, specifically asking town council to help us construct. A, a way forward, a solution, a solution um, is important to me. Okay. There's an answer out there. Right? Hmm? There is an answer for Pete's sake. We're not talking about the moon, <laughs> right? right? Come on, we can we can do this. Um, and it is different, right? And it's been a little frustrating for me as well because I don't feel like there has been a lot of uh, townwide cooperation to problem solve. But maybe I'm wrong about that, and hopefully. This special town meeting article drives the question forward from all sides. I think you're right. I think we've been kind of burying our head in the sand because it's a difficult problem. It's a difficult problem, and yeah. you know what? It's easier just to kind of forget about it. For yeah, but the only way through it is but, through it. So yeah, let's go. We, so let's get a positive here and proactive. I agree. And just for fun, Jane is a former chief of police, so her perspective on this is really welcome. I, I appreciate that from a public safety standpoint. So through the chair. Yes. There is a motion to adjourn and a second. I think that needs to be voted upon before any uh, suggestion to the select board is discussed or moved no. on. No, listen to you. Thanks, John. Would I you want to be the go ahead and withdraw <laughs> your motion real quick, and we'll do it again. Or, so you, could, or you could vote to not adjourn. Oh, vote um, to not all right, we can vote. Withdraw it. I'll withdraw it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay. So what? We're so if the board uh, can I throw out a suggestion to yes. the chair if the board uh, would allow the chair or somebody else to write a statement um, ca capturing the sentiments of the board at this meeting um, I think that would be appropriate since it's not essentially a vote to recommend or not recommend the layout is more of a vote of an opinion of the board and that way it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be sure. stated right now yeah is that okay? Are you comfortable, Dave? I'm sorry. I, I know you were distracted. <laughs> I, I, I caught you. I thought. <laughs> sorry. sorry, can you repeat it? Somebody has to collect people's cell phones kids. before the man. <laughs> My daughter's trying to fly in tonight. There's oh, all kinds of delays. Okay. And oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> I get it. The right, uh, the, uh, the what John suggested was the board agreeing to have the chair or the uh, principal planner or in combination write a statement capturing the sentiments of the board and yeah. take that forward. Yeah, that's great. And it'll be forward to the select board. To the select board. Okay. Mm -hmm. What you said a few minutes ago, I think, encapsulated it perfectly. So. Okay, I'll watch the tape. <laughs> That's a good idea. I, 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 I no, hit, you, it was I hit the ball hard. Okay, nice. Thank you. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, motion to adjourn? Yes. Second. I think you need a vote on that. Oh, oh. I know, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. Uh, so, would you ma somebody make that motion? I move Muriel's comment. Suggestion. To send uh, statements you move, yes. you move to that thing. have the chair prepare a statement yes. capturing the sentiment of the board and pass board along to the select board. So moved. Second. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? Thank you. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I appreciate that, guys. Uh, okay. Motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. Second. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all.